Hi Anna, my name is Vanessa, I'm 34 years old, I'm from Melbourne, Australia and I'm a stay-at-home mum. Just to give your audience a little bit of a background on what's happening here in Melbourne at the moment in terms of lockdowns, we are going through stage four lockdowns, which means that we are only allowed out of our homes for essential items, that includes groceries and pharmaceuticals, uh, to see a doctor, to get up to an hour of exercise a day. Uh, if we're permitted workers, we can leave to go to work, but we need to carry paperwork with us the whole time. We have a curfew, so we need to be home by 8 o'clock at night and we can't leave until 5 o'clock the next day, the next morning, sorry. We also have mask mandates and that also applies to children from the ages of 12 and above. For all other children, it's optional and especially in my area, I've seen a lot of kids um, as young as 18 months wearing masks. So just a little bit of background about myself. I am um, married, I have a four and a half year old little girl. Um, who under um, nor normal circumstances sees a speech therapist for severe language delays. She has delays in all three areas of language, so that's expressive, receptive and pragmatic. Pragmatic is the social aspect of language. So just to give you a better understanding, she didn't point until she was three years old and she also, and then, sorry, and then soon after, just after her third birthday, she said her first word. So that gives you a little bit of an understanding of, um, of yeah, where her language is, it's quite inhibited. Um, so her speech therapy has ceased. She, it ceased back in March, um, once the lockdown started. And then after I think eight or nine weeks of lockdowns, once the lockdowns were eased, she went back for a few weeks. It might have been three or four sessions. And now because of the so-called second wave, she's, um, yeah, that's been cut off again. So there's no more speech therapy. She was able to go to daycare up until a month ago. So, and because of the new, the new rules, um, if you're a permitted worker, your child can still attend daycare. And because my husband is a permitted worker, she can attend daycare. However, one month ago, there was a local, oh, I don't want to call it outbreak. There were, because it wasn't an outbreak, there were a few people at the kinder who tested positive for the virus. So they closed the whole kinder down for one month. And they've only just reopened. They reopened yesterday. So we were really excited to go back yesterday. She was really excited after spending a month with me, uh, being home alone with no social interaction, no parks, everything's closed here. We're supposed to be isolating. Um, yeah, I've been getting out with her as much as I can. We go for lots of walks and, and we do a lot of activities at home, but it just doesn't compensate for the social interaction that kids need at that age. Um, so yeah, we were really excited to get back into it yesterday. We went to kinder, I walked in the front door and I saw that most, um, so over half of the staff, teachers and educators were wearing masks. And this really upset me because um, as anybody with a child who has language delays um, learns, it's very important for children to be able to see facial expressions, read lips and see smiles so that they can decipher meaning from the, from language. Uh, also, a lot of these kids have issues, and, and my daughter included, with speech. So it's really important that they can see, you know, the way that um, they can see other people's mouths moving so they can learn how to position their tongue and move their lips um, when talking. So um, it's really important for these kids to be able to see um, see faces. So that was, um, yeah, that was really upsetting for me. Especially because um, I don't watch the mainstream media. I do my own research, um, and that's only because of this, because of personal circumstances in my life. Um, I yeah, I I did a little bit of research years ago, and I realised that yeah, we weren't really getting a balanced view in our media. So yeah, since then I just like to do my own research um, on certain topics. Um, so yeah, but uh, for most people who do watch mainstream media they're being told that masks stop the spread of viruses, sorry. Um, and obviously, like if you've, any, for anyone who's done a little bit more research, um, you'll know that it's not as clean cut as that. The science on mask wearing is very weak. And even up until a month ago, our own government and mainstream media were advising us um, not to wear masks because they can contribute to the spread of viruses. And that overall, they just don't work. 
But then recently, obviously, out of nowhere, these mask mandates have come in based on really dodgy science to any standard. Um, no randomized control studies. But um, but people hear this and they just assume that that they work and you know they wanna they wanna wear them to help others and to help themselves stop the spread. So they believe they're doing the right thing. Um, and the fault, the blame really lies with our mainstream media, in my opinion. You just need to watch um, one of the daily press conferences with um, our Premier da um, Daniel Andrews to see that, um, yeah, our media is very one-sided. They're not asking hard questions. They're basically just towing the political line. And it even appears as though they might be having um, their questions pre-approved before the press conference. I've only seen one or two hardball questions asked to Daniel Andrews um, and the, it was actually the other day and I think I believe the female journalist may have been from Sky News and she asked um, Daniel Andrews if the 20 year old who sadly did pass away with the coronavirus if he had any other pre-existing conditions and he just stuttered and stumbled over his words he went red in the face he had no idea what to say because obviously that doesn't go along with the fear-mongering narrative that they that they that they are working towards um if somebody if a completely healthy 20 year old 20 year old person dies with coronavirus that's really scary um and devastating if they have other pre-existing illnesses you know it's obviously still devastating but it, it paints a different picture um entirely so yeah it was good to see that but we don't have enough of those questions being asked uh so i overall like i know that we're gonna get through this we're gonna get through the other end of this virus most of the people who are passing away um with the virus in melbourne are you know in their in their 70s 80s and 90s so in many cases um i think most cases they're in care homes and um, they've got had many other pre-existing illnesses. So even though, of course, it's very sad, it's just you know, the fact that it is happening in that age demographic, it, it does sort of, you know, beg the question, like, are these people dying because of the virus or are they just dying with the virus? And, you know, the PCR test as well, that, that has a lot of question mask marks sorry question marks against it um there's a lot of high false positive rate so so yeah um so sorry as i was saying i know that we're going to get through this i don't think we're going to have an excessive death rate here in melbourne once this is all over but i fear that our kids are going to come through this and they're going to you know be worse off they're going to have anxiety issues they're going to have stunted development this is a massive social experiment. It's never been done in modern times before. So we're only gonna learn in the future, you know, what sort of ripple effect this has had on them. And that is my main concern. And I don't feel like we're putting our kids, we're not putting our kids first. And um, we should be putting our kids first. That's not to say we shouldn't be protecting the elderly and the vulnerable, we should be. Um, but this isn't the answer. This really isn't the answer. There are m many other options. And yeah, um, so yeah, so thank you, Anna. This isn't something I would normally do. I'm quite an introverted person, so it's been really out of my comfort zone, but I feel like now is the time that we all need to start speaking up. You know, if we have a different opinion, um, if we have different information that conflicts with what we're being told in the mainstream, we need to come forward. We owe that to ourselves, we owe it to our kids, because if we don't speak now, we're just gonna get lost in the herd. And you know, these man mandatory masks, what will they lead to? Will it lead to mask mandates in schools? I wouldn't be at all surprised. And yeah, what sort of effect will that have on our, on our kids? Okay, thank you, Anna, all the best. Um, I hope you inspire other people to come forward and do what you're doing. We definitely need more people like you. Thank you.